Uh, Colin Ross Greer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm sure we could have all foreseen the points broadly made by Richard Leonard and Ruth Davidson in uh, opening, and I, I have prepared some remarks in response to that line of argument. But before we get to that, though, I'm not planning on any big build-up to a point everyone is well aware of. The Greens will, of course, oppose this motion. And before I get to the partisan manoeuvres defining this debate, I want to explain why. I spent four months warning that a system was being designed which would not only treat young people like data points than individual learners, but one which was fundamentally unjust to working class young people and to those in our most deprived communities in particular. I challenged the Education Secretary and the SQA in Parliament, as did Patrick Harvey. I lodged freedom of information requests and wrote to the Equalities and Human Rights Commissioner once her office became involved. My team and I published our own analysis of the schools most likely to be disadvantaged by the system. We were certainly not the only ones to raise these concerns. Ian Gray did an excellent job of raising them as well. But in Parliament, we have consistently been leading on this issue, just as we have on the fundamentally broken nature of the assessment system in Scotland and the organisational culture of the SQA. When the results arrived last week, we took no pleasure in being vindicated. I'm sure I wasn't the only one who spent Monday evening dearly wishing that I would be proven dramatically wrong the next morning. But None of us were. For days, my inbox was flooded with stories from pupils, parents, and particularly from teachers, heartbroken and outraged over what had happened. I hope we were all inspired to witness the revolt of thousands of young people and their supporters who took to the streets, launched petitions, spoke to the media, and lobbied all of us to have this undone. Without their resistance, I don't think we would have seen the reversal announced on Tuesday. In one particular letter that I received, which was also sent to the Education Secretary, a parent told me how their child had been presented with an award for maths by none other than John Swinney himself, had achieved over 90% in their National 5 and hires, and was clearly on track to an A at advanced hire, but was devastated to be given a D by the SQA. The moderation system was fundamentally designed to maintain the apparent credibility of grades at an aggregate national level. It was not designed, regardless of the intentions of its designers, to award each individual young person the grades that they deserved. And for that reason alone, it should never, ever have been put into operation. But it was, and last week we saw the results. The question was, what were we as Parliament going to do about them? Labour's initial, uh, initial response was visceral, but ultimately vague condemnation, leading the Daily Record's political editors to suggest that it was the Greens leading the opposition to this rather than the Labour Party. And what power Paul Hutchin turns out to have over the Labour Party. As an almost immediate response to his comments, Labour dropped the nuclear option, the motion of no confidence. From that moment, every opposition party had the same choice. Negotiate a solution with the government or simply gun for the Education Secretary. Any one party could have secured a fix for 75,000 young people in exchange for their support. But of course, only the Greens were interested in actually fixing the problem. Others simply saw a political opportunity. One that, given today's events elsewhere in the UK, takes on a particularly hypocritical tone. Our MSPs agreed that we would support the motion of no confidence unless the government agreed to implement our proposed solutions immediately. Those solutions were the restoration of all 124,000 downgraded results to the level estimated by teachers, the preservation of 9,000 upgraded results, given it would be a bit perverse to penalise those young people a week later, an independent review into how this happened despite months of warnings, which will consider the issues raised around transparency and scrutiny, and a second longer term review of the exams and assessment system in Scotland. As everyone is now aware, the government chose to deliver on those demands. The Greens' only priority here was restoring the grades of 75,000 young people who had been treated so unjustly. That is what was achieved. So I find it pretty entertaining that the Tories in particular are squealing in outrage once again at a terrible error made by the Scottish Government, but as always, ducking the issue of their own party, doing the same thing on a measurably worse scale in this country's other government. To be calling for John Swinney's resignation, but apparently have full confidence in the disgraced former Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson, really does take some brass neck. The stories from England, Wales and Northern Ireland are just as heartbreaking as those we saw here. I'm rounding off, but if there's time on hand, presiding officer. Yes. Ms. Davison. I hope I get my time back in hand, presiding officer. 
Ruth Davidson is trying to give some kind of impression that Gavin Williamson saw the problem that was coming and acted to fix it. No, he did not. Gavin Williamson was making statements to the press saying any attempt to fix this would somehow give young people grades they didn't actually deserve. What, is in, uh, what has come about in England today is demonstrably worse. It is the same error in principle, but measurably, proportionately, quantifiably worse than what has happened in Scotland. No government in the UK is free from blame in this entirely foreseeable and avoidable debacle. The difference so far in Scotland is not only did the Greens use our position to make sure the problem was fixed, but the First Minister and the Education Secretary have both held up their hands and apologised. That doesn't undo the damage. They have a long way to go before that's the case. But if there's one thing that I can't stand in politics, it's hypocrisy. And looking around at the two-faced positions of other parties in this parliament today, I see more of that than I do a sincere interest in the best interests of our young people. And the Greens will have nothing to do with it. Thank you.